Hey guys, American Pizza Books here. I am back with another review today, and today I'm going to be reviewing Hellfire by John Saul. I did mention in my review of Midnight Voices, also by John Saul, that I had read Hellfire recently. I wanted to do a review on it, and now I'm going to do that. Um, this book was published in 1986, so this is actually one of his uh, older works. Not his, not one of his oldest works, but one of his older works, definitely. Because I think Midnight Voices was published in like 2000. Two, I think, and this one was in 86, so this is definitely going back. Now, I had heard some good things about this one. I'd watched a few videos of people doing their John Saul book collections, and this one was recommended. Uh, someone in the comments also recommended, I believe it was um, Punish the Sinners or Suffer the Children. I know a lot of people recommend those ones as well. Now, I, I know those books are like some of Saul's like oldest works, I believe, was it was it Suffer the Children, I believe, was his first ever published work. So I definitely want to read those soon. But today we're going to be uh, looking at Hellfire. So I think I'm just going to read the back to you guys. Because uh, it, it gives like a major plot point. And then I'll just kind of take it from there and just explain more to you guys what this book is all about. But So, on the back it says, Pity the Dead. For 100 years, the old mill has stood silent, its dread secrets locked away and barred from view. Still, the people of Westover, Massachusetts, remember. Remember and whisper of that fateful day when horrifying flames claimed 11 innocent lives. The day the mill's iron doors slammed shut forever. Pray for the living. Now, Westover is a sleepy town tucked away beyond the interstate, all but forgotten. Now... The last of the once powerful Sturgis family dreams of reopening the mill. Now, Philip Sturgis is about to unlock the doors to the past and unleash an elemental fury. For beyond those doors, padlocked for so many years, deep within the dark, abandoned building, a terrible vengeance waits. A vengeance conceived in Hellfire. It's the title. So... That's one of the plot points. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of take you to the beginning. So as with most John Saul books, this opens with like a uh, preface uh, or prologue, whatever you'd call it. And it shows this boy, this like kind of, I think he's like maybe 10, 11 years old. And he goes into this mill after being like kind of pressured because there's like kids across the street and they see him going towards the mill and he doesn't want to look like a chicken. So he goes in and he's kind of walking around and he starts to get freaked out, and then all of a sudden, he gets pushed. I believe he gets pushed, or, or something happens to him. And that's what we get, and then of course it goes to the present time when this book takes place. So, in the beginning, we're introduced to Caroline Sturgis, who has just married into the Sturgis family. Now, the Sturgis family is a very rich family, and they're also friends with um, a few other rich families, and... I don't think it's like a, a full-on gated community from what I from what I remember, but they're definitely separated off from the rest of the town that they're in, and the rest of the town kind of views them in kind of a negative light because all of the rich families in, in this in the story kind of look down on on all the uh, you know I guess poorer people and whatnot. There's definitely like an element of like class and classism I would say in here. But uh, Caroline is one of our main characters. She's just married Philip Sturgis, who is quite different from the rest of the family in that he doesn't look down on others, and he's actually a pretty good guy. He doesn't have the typical, like, rich, snobby person, you know, thing going on. Unlike his mother, Abigail, who does have that personality and outlook, and Abigail very much disapproves of Caroline and Caroline's daughter, Beth, who is another one of our main characters in this story. And it opens with a funeral of Conrad Sturgis, who was basically like the patriarch of the family. And he's just passed away. And, and then we're introduced to... We get, we get multiple perspectives as, as, as per usual. We get a perspective from Caroline, from Beth. We also get some perspectives from Philip. And then we're all, there's also Alan, who was uh, Caroline's uh, ex-husband, who they have divorced not too long ago. And that's more or less what the characters are, what the setting is. And then obviously, as I read on the back, it's also about this mill that the Sturgises used to have business in. 
and it has a very nasty history because they basically had like child workers and child slaves working in it and at one point in the past it burned down and like 11 or 11 or so children died in it which we also get a perspective in later on in the book but and that's basically what it's about it's about you know because philip wants to reopen wants to remodel it and turn it into like a mall and then reopen it but caroline is kind of against it and so was philip's uh father and i believe abigail at first agrees that it's a good idea to reopen it as a mall but then is later on against the idea when things start to happen and that's kind of what the story centers around i would say that there's kind of like there's two stories here there's the one centered around the mill which is more or less the main the main you know uh premise of this book and then there's also kind of like the family dynamics and the conflict between Beth and Tracy, which is Philip's daughter. And also, Philip's wife uh, has passed away. She is no longer alive. So it is just Philip, his daughter Tracy, and his mother Abigail. And it, sh it really shows like the conflict between like Abigail and Tracy and between them and like Beth and Caroline. And then Philip is just kind of in the middle and he's kind of trying to make things work. And I will say, one thing that I did like about Philip is that you kind of expect, like, because a lot of the time you get that sort of, like, stereotypical, like, step-parent, you know, kind of favorite, would obviously favor their own child over their stepchild. But here we actually see Philip trying to, like, bond with Beth and, and get along with her, and, and he's actually, like, nice to her and stuff. And he also recognizes the very clear, like, flaws and personality flaws of Tracy, his own daughter. He kind of recognizes that she's kind of a, well, not just kind of a, a real brat, and that's putting it lightly. And I'll get, I'll, I may as well get into the characters. Um, you know, for the most part, I really like the characters. I thought that John Saul did a good job of writing, uh, once again, I think he does a good job of writing uh, child characters or kid characters, whatever you want to call it. Um, Beth was really sympathetic because... She's trying to fit into this new way of life with this wealthy family, but it's just not working out. Tracy's really, really mean to her. Abigail really doesn't like her. She's really, really not nice to Beth. The only one that's nice to her is Philip. But, you know, her life is absolute hell, and Tracy makes sure of that. And I'll get into her in a minute. It was, oh, God. But, you know, we see her struggle. So she's a very sympathetic character, but a very likable character. And eventually she befriends an entity known as Amy, who was someone who passed away in the mill. And I don't want to give away any spoilers as to who Amy is and how she ties into the Sturgis family. But you'll see what I mean if you read this book. And then there's Caroline, which, um, you know, I, I didn't really feel... I mean, she she's a good character, I suppose. I didn't really feel strongly either way about Caroline. Um, I felt more strongly about the main character uh, in Midnight Voices. But here, like, she's a good character. But coming away from the story and in hindsight, I don't really have any strong opinions one way or another. She is also sympathetic because, again, like, you know, Philip's mother, Abigail, really doesn't like her and doesn't approve of her at all because of where she comes from. Same thing with Tracy. So... I would say Caroline's a pretty, she's a pretty likable, again, sympathetic character. I really liked Philip. I, I kind of went to him a little bit, but I really liked Philip because, because, again, he kind of bucks all these stereotypes of what the step parent is, you know, and, and stuff, because he was really likable. And he actually defended Beth over Tracy, his own kid, and sev on several occasions in this book. So I really like that sort of, like, dynamic and, and stuff. And then there was obviously Abigail, who was, like, the matriarch of the family, more or less, and... You know, she was just thoroughly, you know, she was thoroughly unlikable. Although I would say Tracy was uh, was even more unlikable. But, you know, Abigail is like this, just this very, very, she's this old lady who's very much stuck in the past. Because, like, they still have servants in the house where they live. And they very much treat them like servants, like Abigail and Tracy do at least. And... You can see the discomfort that, like, Caroline has about it because, you know, she, she obviously didn't come from a rich family, so she's used to doing all these, like, small things herself. And you can see her obvious discomfort as well as Beth's with, with like, the, you know, these, these servants and, and stuff. But, yeah, Ab Abigail is just, uh, she, she does kind of, so she's sort of 
not not redeemed, but like she does at least have like a, a few moments towards the end of the book where she's not completely like detestable. But uh, she's she's uh, she's pretty unlikable. She's kind of a there's no other word for it. She's kind of a bitch. Um, and then there's Tracy. Now Tracy. I, John Saul did a phenomenal job of writing just like an evil, straight up evil, nasty child. I tell you, Tracy Sturgis in this book, Veruca Salt from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory has nothing on Tracy Sturgis in this book. Like, she would make Veruca Salt blush. She is just a nasty, awful, just terrible, terrible child. Just awful. Like, it's, it's, she's not just a brat, she is like a, I, I would say, sociopath or psychopath, because you get perspectives from her, and you see how just her thought process of how she is going to manipulate the situation and, and make Beth's life miserable, or, you know, trying to get her grandmother to do things for her. And there's even one point in this book where, like, she thinks that her grandmother might be, like, having a heart attack or something like that. And she's worried at first, but, like, then she thinks, well, if my grandma were to die and I would see her dead body, it would be really exciting to tell my friends. It's like, holy shit, this girl is, like, a psychopath. This, like, she is downright evil. But, yeah, I thought that overall the characters are really well done. There's also Alan, um, Beth's biological father. Um, and I thought that he was really well done. He doesn't really, like, he's not a main focus in the book. But overall, I thought that he was he was pretty pretty likable, and he's also working on restoring the mill. Uh, so it's it's funny because he's actually working for Philip Sturgis, Caroline's new husband and and Beth's stepfather. So we see that Beth's father and stepfather do like they they tend to really get along and they're almost friends. So because usually again you kind of expect like you know the step parent and then like you know like or if it's the stepfather and the father you kind of expect them to like kind of avoid each other or just not like talk that much but here they're pretty amicable and they're like really really friendly towards one another and they're like working together on this thing so that was kind of cool to see so there's a lot of dynamics that you would kind of expect that isn't like here and this stuff so that was really nice to see so you know the characters for me were what really made the story work and then the story itself, which again revolves around the mill, we do get to see some some stuff that happens in the mill. There's a few characters that go inside, like I know uh, Abigail at one point goes in the mill, and I think she is the one that ends up seeing like all like these these dead faces, and they're all like these spirits of the dead children, and, and sees all the faces, and they like all start to pop up, and that was really really creepy. And then we also see Beth go in there a few times, and like she sees things, and then. I think it was Philip goes in there and he sees things and that that aspect was really well done. There's also a really really gruesome death in here and when it happens like it honestly kind of hits you like in the feels like it it really made me feel bad. I don't want to spoil anything, but it really made me feel bad for everyone involved. So that was really well done. The pacing, um, as always, the pacing in this book, flawless, in my opinion. You know, there's there there was never a point in this story that I thought was wasted on, on you know, just minuscule shit or anything. There was never a point where I was just like, oh my god, let the story just, you know, get on, get on with it. Never a point in here like that. John Saul is usually pretty damn good at pacing and stuff. He doesn't, he doesn't waste any time. He doesn't waste any words. He usually knows how to move the story along, so that was really good. And then... The ending, the ending I thought was, it was good, but it left you off on a cliffhanger. And, you know, I, I, I some of Saul's books, at least from what I've read, kind of do that, but this one was like seriously a cliffhanger. So it was just like, God damn it, you know, but it was actually kind of cool at the same time, how it was done, how it kind of showed like a generational, like, curse almost like the potential for a generational curse on this family because of all the bad shit that's happened to them and there's also a ton of deaths in here like i i didn't think that there would be the number of deaths here like with the characters that there end up being so there's a fuck ton of deaths in this book um i won't say who because again i don't want to spoil anything but wow a lot of deaths uh really crazy crazy ending and it was, it was, I, I almost wanted the story to continue 
I almost like I almost like like with Midnight Voices, I almost would like a sequel to this, but obviously we're not gonna get one, so that's too bad. But still, though, crazy ending. But I would say a good ending. It it, it kind of leaves you hanging, but not in a bad way. So that's that. So overall, I would say Hellfire, very very good book. I don't know if I enjoy this more than Midnight Voices. I would say that this one in Midnight Voices is. It's probably close to being on the same level. I would say Midnight Voices was probably a little bit creepier and scarier than this one. But that's not to say that this one is, is not good in comparison, because it's very, very good. So if you're if you're getting into John Saul and you want to start with a book, I would highly recommend starting with Hellfire or starting with Midnight Voices. You can't really go wrong with either one, in my opinion. So Hellfire, very good. I'd probably give it like a 5 out of 5. It's It's good. It does what it's supposed to do. And like I always say, you know, it, when it comes to John Saul or a lot of these like thriller horror writers, they're not trying to, you know, be Hemingway or anything like that. They're supposed to write good, fun thrillers that you can just, you know, escape into and have fun with and be creeped out. And John Saul does that very, very well. And he does a damn good job with this one. So highly recommended. And uh, that's it for this one. So peace and you all have a good day and keep on reading.